Hey guys, I've been getting uh, some requests to show how to update the Wizard X220. So I figured I'd make this video to uh, show you what I learned. and It's a little bit um, tricky, but pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, what I learned. So let me zoom in just a little bit. Uh, I have my Wizard taken apart just so I can show you what happens, but uh, first thing you want to do is get a USB cable and it's a USB micro on this side and plug it up to your Wizard 220. You get a series of blinking red lights and then they'll stop and then this blue light will stay on. Now, I didn't have to install any drivers. Um, it gets recognized by my computer and makes a little noise and uh, it's ready to go so if you have any problems with this part I would try a different USB port or a different USB cable but uh, as far as installing drivers I didn't have to install anything special uh, so let me switch over to my computer so I can show you what to do from here uh, during this process you do not need any battery packs plugged up to the to the drone just uh, <clears throat> just this USB cable that's all you need all right, switching over to the computer. First thing you want to do is go, in, go into Google and search for Betaflight Configurator. This is a Chrome plugin, so I assume you need to be using the Chrome browser, which I use by default anyways. So you click on this, it brings you into this uh, Chrome web store, and I already have it installed, but right here it would say install app, and once you have it installed, you click launch app. All right, first problem I had um, was uh, this thing not detecting anything. And uh, basically, if you see just COM1 here in manual selection, something's wrong. It's on COM4. So if, if you see this COM4 option, then you should have it plugged in correctly and everything should be working properly. So in order to update the drivers, first thing you want to do is click on Firmware Flasher and you'll come to this screen. Since you have the wizard, uh, you will have this F3 flight controller. So you'll scroll down. It should be like this to begin with. Choose a board. You'll scroll down to SP Racing F3. Select that one. The most recent stable Software is the 3.1.0 right now. Mine came with 2.9.1 installed. I have 3.1 already. I'll go ahead and flash back to 2.9.1 to show you the, uh, <laughs> the difficulties involved with it and what you might encounter. So first thing you wanna try, uh, uh, it should be just like this. Nothing should be selected. You can try it. Uh, you'll go down to load firmware, click on it, and it should load the firmware into uh, into the memory ready to be flashed. Then you click flash firmware. All right, this is the most common problem that happened. Communication with bootloader failed. <coughs> Excuse me. I watched a Joshua Bardwell video, props to Josh, he's awesome, uh, on how to do this and basically, his explanation was flip-flop these uh, sliders and try again and try again and try again until it works. And that's basically the method. So his first suggestion was enable no reboot sequence and flash on connect, try again. Okay, no response, programming failed. Don't be alarmed by this. This is totally what happens every single time. It's very frustrating, but uh, this is just what you have to do. Okay, I'm not gonna mark show unstable releases. So I'll just keep changing some of these. Oh, I thought it was gonna work.
Holy crap, it's working. Okay, so you saw that. All that unplugging, plugging back in, switching, flip-flopping, settings. All that just to just to get it to flash. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason. You just have to continually try different things until it works, and it will work. All right, now it's probably going to reboot. It's got a few little flashes. It says programming was successful, according to Joshua Bardwell. Sometimes it says uh, something to the effect of programming verification failed or something like that. And uh, he says that there's no problem with that, even though it sounds bad. Uh, the verification step can fail. It still doesn't mean uh, the process failed. All right, so in the end, uh, all I had to have selected was full chip erase and manual baud rate, and it finally, finally flashed. So now uh, the firmware on my on my quad is now uh, 2.9.1. Anyways, now uh, to update back <laughs> to 3.1. So I'll select 3.1, load the firmware, and go back through the same process. And I got real lucky. It's flashing, it's going back to 3.1. But in uh, your situation, you basically go through the same process that I did if you're at 2.9.1. You'll select the appropriate flight controller from the drop down menu. You select 3.1.0 update, and then you'll begin. Uh, by enabling a few of those slider options, loading your firmware from this button here, and then clicking flash. And don't be discouraged if you get these messages telling you that it's not responding or, or whatever the error is, just keep switching things, keep trying, keep unplugging and plugging back in. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks, it would help me an awful lot. Until next time, talk to you later.